Welcome back to the referee track. Um, thank you, everybody, for being here. And thank you, Alex, from VMware, who is going to make the case for memory segmentation. And off you go. Hi, folks. Uh, so this is a commitment. I want to show the uh, share, actually, two projects that I've been involved with in a, in a couple of years. And one is regards to security, and one is regarding performance. And surprisingly, the solution is, is, is kind of the same. It shares the same uh, benefits. And, and the solution is memory segmentation. And so, well, I'll start. Uh, so basically, memory segmentation solves these two uh, issues. So one of the uh, is uh, DMA security, when you don't want to an attached device to take over your machine. And uh, actually, this work was presented at a a system uh, oper operating system conference in 2018, and my current project involves uh, rethinking zero copy uh, networking. Right? Uh, so I presented this talk at, at NetDev just about a, a month ago, and you can find the uh, you know the full fledged uh, talk and, and slides uh, on YouTube and and on the NetDev uh, conference page. So then, DMA aware Malik for network. Why, why do we need this? I, I'll start from the beginning. I will assume uh, no one knows anything, so, uh, uh, but I'll try to be quick about it. So DMA, direct memory access is when you have this, you know, uh, DMA DIM, and you have attached devices like NVMe, GPUs, and, and Mix, obviously, that can write directly to, this, uh, to your memory without involving CPU, which obviously is good for performance, but can lead to game attacks. And you have uh, a couple of notorious examples like this thin firewire unit, which was uh, well, discovered a couple of years ago in a Wikileaks uh, leaks. And you have this PCI leech uh, project on GitHub. So basically, in all of these cases, you, you have some machine and you know that is attached to your, well, in this example, laptop, but can be your server or, or you know, whatever you have the desk compute and support the image. And it can uh, actually hack your machine, take over. So luckily, we have IMU. So IMU provides other special solutions, like just MMU for processes. Uh, that's the same benefit you get from an IMU for devices. So to six devices, device device access only to those pages that the operating system defines. So you have a virtual address for the CPU uh, accessible pages, and the IO virtual. Uh, address that the device can use, that's the memory, right? So it has some processor tables, just like process. Now, I'll get into the uh, send operation just, just to make it more clear. So when you send a, a, a buffer, right, uh, the device driver, what it does, it gets the virtual address of, of, of the buffer, the MM maps, And then it allocates in, in IOV, the, the process, the, the MM map operation. It allocates an IOVA. It updates the, updates the device's page schedule, right? So we have the IOVA according to the physical address of the page. And then the packet is sent, right? So then it, the next scan gets into it, reads the, the address, the IOPLB. That will be just the same as, as an, a TLB for process. So we have a, a fast uh, locus head cache for devices as well. So, uh, IP is is updated, and then you have to be man map. Right? You, make, you, make, you must revoke the access to this page because there's no need for the device to have access to this memory. So we remove the page shell entry, and we must flush the IPLB, otherwise the device can still access the memory, although the, the page table has, has no record of this. Right? And then we free the, the actual IP address. So that's how a IMU, DMA API, and, and device drivers work, work together. I hope they made it clear. Now, the problem uh, with IMU, besides the fact that it really, really uh, kills your performance, it that doesn't actually provide security, which is kind of you know uh, would, would, not, would be nice to have. And the problem uh, that it has is called a separate vulnerability. So in this case, we're the device driver needs to, the, the device needs to be only just one the small buffer, like an ICMB bucket or R bucket, or something small, right? A, it needs access to just a, a single cache line, but it gains access to the whole copy page, right? 
And furthermore, when you think about, you know, if I'm being specific about, you know, network devices on the receive side, a, what happens is that each time when you receive a packet, right, and it can be 300 bytes, you actually expose a, a structure that's called SMB transport. And it appears in every IO buffer that is going uh, on the receiver, right? And this can be shared info includes a combo pointer or a pointer to a combo pointer, which can be overridden and, you know, uh, things go bad from there. Now, uh, following the, you know, people understood this and, and kind of talked about it. But then finally, in, in 2019, this uh, project, Underground, came in. And what is shown that they can take this effigy and take just one of the things they did is take the E1000 emulation from the Intel device driver that is for visualization, plug in the FPGA, make it malicious, and actually uh, take over your uh, your purpose and, and your you know, working on the machine. And, and they did it for Macs, Windows. Uh, they kind of did a poor job doing for, for Linux, but for that we have uh, this master thesis that buffer that you know. Uh, it showed that Linux is also vulnerable for subway, to subpage uh, vulnerabilities. So basically, if you have a physical machine that anyone can somehow get physical access to, today it is vulnerable, right? Because IMU doesn't provide security. So this is a problem that we, we, we set out to, to solve in, in 2000, well, actually 16. Uh, how do you provide a DMA security? To your uh, system, and still don't lose uh, all of the uh, performance benefits from you know high-speed networking device, right? Uh, because we know when you use strict uh, protection, when you invalidate the IPv6 IO, you can really go uh, more than you know a couple of gigabits per second, and you know your your whole CPU is just busy doing the IO filtering validation. So how do you, how do you provide both security and performance? That, that's kind of the question. And, and, and what we understood uh, uh, then that they actually the, the API itself, or actually the security assumption that we have with the DMA API, as we saw it, is incorrect, right? So we have the DMA map, and then the device has legal access, and then we have the DMA unmap, and then device, the device has no longer, no longer has a, a actual access. And, and A, it doesn't provide the security because of subpage vulnerability, because in that window of time, you can still have metadata that is accessible, and while in this valid access time slot, device the device can do malicious stuff. So you don't have security, and maybe you don't need these borders. Maybe they are artificial. So let's let's see what happens if we relax these restrictions, right? So we allow the device to access the buffer. Uh, any other time. So that, that, that's kind of the slide that, that I described. So when you do the uh, mapping for and mapping and mapping for each buffer, you either have uh, the uh, cost of map and map, or there was also a solution that actually also was one of our projects which was presented in 2016, where we actually at the point of, of, of the main map and map, we just allocate a different buffer, which is completely, which is uh, constantly mapped and covered between the two. And kind of, you know, worked fine until you went up to 100 gigabits per second or, or, or more, and then you, your memory control was just short. So you, you have to do work each time. You have to add some transient, transient state to the state that you're working with. And there's no, no way around it unless you relax this assumption that the, uh, the main map that the API provides is good. So we changed the best one. Now the idea is when you receive a buffer, and we're talking about receive because on, on send it you have read access, which is you know dangerous, but not as dangerous as write access. So on on, on receive you have this buffer and you DMA map. And at this point you just do nothing. Because you don't really care if the buffer is mutable, or it's not until the information is accessed by the CPU. And when the information is read, this is the point in time we have, you, you must provide security. And actually what happens 
is uh, for, for most socket APIs, right? You, you receive a buffer and, and you know, the headers are written, right? So the first cache line is access. Maybe the first two cache lines are, are access. But the whole, uh, the rest of the, you know, 1500 bytes are just, you know, untouched most of the time. So when we copy, when we, when we posit, uh, you know, system call, copies the data from the camera to the user, you get your immutability of the data, which is what you need. Right? So when the CPU reads, you just disallow any more changes to the button. So the way we did it, we, we uh, revised network set. So revise is a strong uh, word. Basically, I looked uh, for any uh, memory locations for a uh, you know, buffer or for, for IO buffers. And replace them with a specific uh, different location uh, called, uh, which allocated a buffers that are always doing enough. So we have a pool of pages that already have an IOB app, either, either write, read, or write access. And it's it's a pool. It's, uh, the pool is implemented in magazines. It's my effective. I'll talk about it maybe at the end. Uh, so there's an allocator that. You know, you, you can ask a, to get a page, which is already been enough. You don't have to map it on your own in the data. So that's that's what DMA aware model of one application is. So when you do this, uh, your mapping and unmapping operation will do nothing. Well, the mapping operation actually returns the IDBA between you, but it's already there. It's already part of the of, of, of the of the page itself. And so you allocate a specific uh, allocation function, but you don't really care about the uh, freeing part because it, that's taking care of it, the free page and free page and, and whatever. Uh, the standard uh, memory arrangement in the next step, like the reference counting, and when it reaches zero, at this point, it actually goes back to your uh, uh, DMA work model rather than the page. Right, and you can read some memory via the street interface in, in, in other ways. So, question? Uh, yeah, allocated for which, mapped for which device? That's, uh, in, you have the context for in, in TCP socket, and actually in the Ubiquiti socket, you allocate memory. You only know which device is, is, is uh, this buffer is intended. So you have this context oh, in, in general. So for receive and transmit as well. Don't you have to do routing before you know which device so, you're so going to transfer? The point that, that that's that's kind of the, the interesting. So sockets, PCP sockets, obviously they are connected to the device, and you already know where it goes. UDP, <laughs> it, it 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 happens to be the case as well that when you get to the point in in you know in the code where you allocate memory for IO, you already know which device you're going to use. Okay, so so we did for PCP and UDP. And that's kind of, you know, we covered 99% of the, you know, networking needs. A control path from the kernel, it's, uh, it's like, you don't really care about it. It's just a so low volume of networking. And SCPP and, and others, you know, BCCP will find someone who uses and, and you know, we can, we can uh, provide a solution to that as well. So, uh, that's kind of the, the, the idea of, of, of memory segmentation. So we have this, uh, Memory that is that has its role, right? And it's it, 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 it's used for for I/O, right? and it's never used for anything else. And at that point, for I/O for specific device, so it can have multiple mail, uh, mail, then uh, pools each for 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 device. Obviously, there are limitations uh, for secure zero copy and zero copy versus like file send and, and the, the rerouting from one device to, to the other. So there are limitations. And there are obviously stupid things that you know the device artists can do, and uh, well, you know, just put metadata on the IO or the IV map page, and then well, you know, really achieve anything. So because it's not a talk about uh, DNA security, I kind of put in all the links for, for the, you know, the previous projects, the papers, and, and the, there's also a, a YouTube video where I talk about the vulnerabilities. Provide some, some tools that you know can find in static analysis and dynamic analysis the vulnerability in your kernel. So if you used to read about it, uh, there's a list. 
Tanaka project is one, the one project uh, that I was not associated with. So that's why it's uh, got, got its own uh, green color, but it's a cool one. And uh, uh, yeah. so if you're interested, this is the list. So um, this is kind of plays a uh, to ask question because now I, I want to talk about my uh, current project and the one where I'm really excited about. So I'm going to give you a couple seconds for questions, any? So, Mayor, uh, in this case, we, we live still behind. It's a new context. In this uh, case, we're trying to think about how to provide zero propane. So, all the solutions that we have today we are cool. And, and kind of the future, as, 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 as I see today, is you kind of have two choices. When you do the implication, you can have your sockets and then you just, it's simple as this it's, it's, it's a high school. A programming project is import a socket, create a socket, connect to the destination, and send you a hello world, and, and you're happy. And the other options, option you have is, is account bias, where you hire a team of highly skilled engineers that you know work for, for, for weeks and months, and things then do blow up. Uh, and, and the reason why you're making this choice is because one is fast and the other is slow. So how, how do you bridge this gap? So obviously, uh, we want uh, zero copy. That's kind of the main, uh, the whole equipment, because a uh, system called, called batching and, and, and everything uh, is in the works. You can do the IOU, uh, for example, as we heard in, in, in previous couple days. But zero copy for networking is the whole equipment. So the problem uh, with uh, zero copy for networking, as opposed to you know uh, storage GPUs, and, and now it's because the Packet arrival order is random. You don't really know where the next packet is going, right? To, to which user. So in this case, the kernel must provide its own you know, generic memory. The packet arrives, and then the data is, is copied to the correct process, right? And on storage and, and GPUs, what would have you, you know for each IO who requested the stuff, right? So you, the process as for an IO provides it's, it's usually a bigger buffer than, than the uh, networking buffers, and it provides these buffers. And you know when it turns on, this specific buffer, user user provide buffer, is used for IO that arrives and, and we have zero copy. And this is a problem for networking. So, so what are the challenges? So kind of it's like isolation, isolation, and isolation. So first and foremost, you have to isolate the kernel memory. From the user can allow ever allow the user to access any memory that is you know currently used or was previously used by the camera and you want to in the data path itself so uh, as we talk about them so probably the, the first cache line of, of, the, of the network packet will usually be accessed uh, and you don't really want to allow the, the user to be able to you know modify the headers in, in flight uh, because you know IP tables and, and forwarding and, and stuff, you don't really want to open this uh, threat uh, idea. Anyway. And obviously, you have to isolate the one user from the other, right? So now we're talking about different security concerns. We have, have nothing to do with them, right? Uh, so in the first, in, in the last uh, forty years, so we had this kind of. Uh, a bunch of, 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 of solutions for, for zero copy. First, we have dynamic mapping, something that Eric is doing in uh, Google, so we have to match zero copy to CPM up, and it kind of, uh, it's, not, it's not free, right? You have this uh, page table manipulation in data path, so you still pay the cost and, and actually some trouble uh, for to scale on the code. FreeBSD had an attempt to do copy and write, but uh, as, 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 as I'm now, as far as I know, it's, it, 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 it's dead now. The second thing that people do is kernel bias, which is, which is nice. So we have DPDK and it, it's the big one that had NetMap uh, 10 years ago and, and probably more. And it's kind of cool, you get zero copy, but you lose all the networks. You don't have uh, you know, the, the protocols, obviously. You don't have TCP, UDP, you don't have the you know, routing, the, anything. You, you, have, you need to do it all on your own. And it's kind of a shame. So, you know, it's just, Years, uh, this year, 
and there's a lot of networking work uh, done and, and some kind of shame to this. Uh, the next thing that people can do is provide limited use case solutions. So we have supply, send file, soft map zone, a lot of things that now with EBPF. But none of this it is a generic send receive that you would like as, as the atomic uh, constituents of your uh, application. Right? So you want to create a buffer, do some, some work, and send it and receive. You don't want to mess with files or anything else. And besides, it's not cheap as well. And obviously, we have specialized hardware, right? So RDMA and we have a, a couple of families of protocols like IWAP, Pantheon, and the Rocket, uh, which are all you know, great. Right? Uh, the problem is you have you need to have the hardware end -end. You need the RDMA over switches, RDMA over NITs, and probably in the future, and the switch feature was never about like, 20 years ago, and, and still don't come RDMA over uh, were router. And kind of the last thing that people think about is shared memory. And, and I actually looked about and, and I couldn't really find any, any interesting or you know a solution on projects that actually you know, survive the, the, their initial uh, presentation. And, and and to my mind, this is kind of the right, the, the right way to go. So the reason why shared memory was not uh, accepted is because of the isolation issues that we discovered. So in shared memory, you can't really easily make sure that the, the, the kernel is not subject to some persona unless you do memory syndication and so that's kind of the, the solution so you provide io only pages and have pages that have a specific role to do io and, and in, in there we actually saw a, a caches for device well which you can actually apply the same logic to user space you can have uh, IO caches for user space pages. Right? So in this case, you would take a mail page and you send it for IO. So the kernel device driver will allocate an, an, an IO page. The packet arrives and then and then it's delivered to the process, to the correct process. So how does this happen? So uh, kind of similar to the uh, old maybe questions in the after this slide. So first thing first to have isolation. So kernel memory. So no kernel data is ever located in IO page, ever. Not before, not after. Everything that is written to this page is something by the user or for the user, right? So the kernel memory is here. Isolation between processes, right? So you have, you have the random access, the random arrival uh, problem that we discussed about, talked about. So, but there is hardware support to solve this. So NVIDIA, as you know, previous amount of, have the notion of kubeless. That's how they implement a DVD buffer the drivers, that's how uh, RDMA works, and it's uh, the same uh, API is used for Ethernet as well. And basically, which means you can create a context pair process. It will have a simple scope called ADQ, and obviously, you can do emulate something and do virtual private drivers with the uh, and others. So, with some hardware support, you can isolate uh, the process, the between process. And now, about the control problem, well, we have. Uh, Scatter Java receive where you can head of, do head of splits and, and, and I think all all the vendors do that. Melanox in the, so you can make sure that the first cache line is in a non user accessible uh, uh, page and the rest of the data is. Right? So here we go. You have shared memory, but you have none of the isolation for uh, problems and you achieve it by uh, uh, just segmenting the cell memory. And it's kind of the same idea uh, with them. It's, it's actually the same solution. That's that's how I actually uh, thought about this one. Just you know, flip the script. Uh, no. So obviously, I want to talk about more about zero copy semantics. Uh, Limitations about zero copy. So zero copy semantics are not the same as copy semantics. I'll, I'll pause a second because uh, if people had questions about isolation, you know, it's the right time to ask. Okay. Yeah. Pause. Right. Uh, so zero copy semantics versus copy semantics. So what happens is that when you do I over zero copy, the, your buffers change ownership. When you do PX, it, the buffer is no longer yours, it belongs to the camera. 
on receive, you don't have at least support for you know, serialization and immunization of your application. You just provide 64K and say, hey, put my information here in, 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 in a single stream. You will actually have to you will deal with the uh, scattered data received, and you know, you're probably limited to the size of a view or whatever Harvard Jar support there is on, on, on the device. Uh, and so now with you know mail, the pictures that we had this API, we create a socket to connect and you send. And now you have this API. Well, Q so it's it's somewhat more uh, complex, but but not that much. So First and foremost, we have to create your uh, mail call, so your memory location for our application. So uh, what, what I'm doing here is, is this specific implementation. I'm using compound pages. So first thing for performance, you it's best to use huge pages and, and kind of uh, it's kind of a question why why two megabyte pages are not the default, and then we have big pages for one gigabyte, a gigabyte, and, and one and small pages for four k. That's kind of the way to go in the future, but it's kind of you know, the next step. So compound pages uh, is when you have a bunch of memory pages that you can treat it as one. Right? So there's a data structure that uh, we actually create. I'm getting ahead of myself. So uh, you initialize huge page memory for the process. And you do it in, in, in any way which you would like to uh, like do it. And you create your allocate. Right? So in this example, we just uh, a cache of 4K pages and 60K pages. This implementation. And then we create a connected socket. So the sockets that I'm using in this implementation, and and and, and, and again, I'm, I'm saying this implementation because once you have memorized it, you have this notion, you can actually do it in a bunch of ways. So once we got over the, the hump of understanding, okay, we actually segment the, the way of how we segment the memory. Dynamic and then you know, let your imagination run wild. So, this is a specific implementation of this memory segmentation for zero code. Obviously, yeah, it helps to understand the difference. So, we initialize your memory, we create a socket. So, in this case, I'm using kernel socket. It's a system call which I provide this, this, this essentially the destination of P and port. And a kind of default uh, of the uh, other flags, and you know, because it's it's a book and, and, and not really a full fledged API yet. Right? So we create a connected socket, it's a TCP socket, and now we have a a, a PC kernel TCP socket, uh, and we have an identifier for it. It's like a file descriptor, but it, but it's it's separate from the file descriptor. And then we allocate a button from that page. Right, so create a cache, and then I'll get the page from this cache. We do some operation, uh, 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 whatever, and send page later. So next thing we do, we, we initialize it is here. It's basically a, 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 like IOU ring, then we send. So we have a shared memory, a ring buffer, you put your eye uh, on it, and, and, and you know, patch your uh, a thieves on receipt operations. And then you send your buffer. So you provide you the index of the socket, the, the buffer that you want to send, the length of the buffer, and some flags. And it's probably, it's usually a, a more flag. Do you have more buffers to send? Do you have, do you want to, to have a system code that will send it immediately? Or do you have more IoT to go behind? And then some time later, you probably want to, to, to inquire about the state of the page. Has the kernel finished doing its fix? Operation and then you can use your page. So that's the new API that I propose, and, and it's kind of not why, 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 not basically, I love it, but it's my point. Uh, so, what is memory segmentation that really specifically I want to talk about again? Yeah. So, it's memory that is intended for a single specific use, right? For the email, it was IVA map pages. For a uh, mail, it's, it's user space, shared pages. And you allocate when you dedicate allocate in the kernel, in the user, wherever you're using it. But you don't really need to, to worry about three. So that's why you can you know, push it up the network stack and, and don't worry about it. You know, whatever. Once the, the reference count reaches zero, the packet returns to your specific cache. 
And so the things that, that we need to change is kind of uh, in, in the core of things, it's, it's structured page, but not stuff by yourself. I just need to add some fields and it actually doesn't make Scrap page work, right? Um, because it, 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 it adding fields to a compound page, to, to the first tail page uh, of the compound pages. If you're not familiar, I will do the compound page, I will uh, just wait for the next slide, I will talk more about it. So there is, surprisingly, the more, more things that you can stop in the structure. And then you just have to modify the input page and compound head, because in the case of compound pages, you have a, a, a few pages there, a two megabyte page, and but for I, I'm actually using each 4K separate. So compound page, compound head needs to be uh, modified as well. And pressure of ink should never, never, ever be used in the kernel unless you know what you're doing. And kind of reads a lot of problems and problems and uh, MLX, MLX drivers. Just you know, stop box. Just, just, just stop. So, page of ink is a bad idea because maybe it's a compound page for some uh, allocation just like this and, and getting the, the right, the wrong uh, atomic reference. So, uh, what is the justification for providing functions like put page and get page? It's for every uh, IO, for, for, every, for, for every memory buffer that is ever used. But we already do that, right? So we have the put page that's kind of the, 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 the whole function. And we have that page one. We have specific use case for a specific uh, page. Well, my, my, what I'm saying is that this line should be more generic. And so just have your callback and, and, and modify it, and it should be a part of the page. And the way, for, for example, the way we identify mail pages is if, if it's a compound page and we have a specific field that I've added that is you know, non zero. And you can add your own checks and, 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 and say that, that is this a dev map page page? Right? Thank you. So we're doing it already. We already have custom uh, management of specific memory, uh, memory pages. What I'm saying is let's make it more generic. Now, uh, so may uses to make like huge, huge pages, as I, felt, uh, as I mentioned, and the first tail page, right? so compound pages uh, have struct page, and one of the unions is, is this struct. Right? So in struct page, the, for compound pages, you will just have an array of struct pages. And so you have the head page, which holds a reference counter, and then you have all the rest, page, all the rest of the pages that we are called tail pages. And the first tail page holds some information. And what we found is that they actually can put more uh, more information. So in this case, they, we have do others. So the, the first tail page has user space address for the specific process that we're uh, servicing. You can put the user space address for this two megabyte page in there. And then you can do some other things like they provide sub confounding. Like we have two megabyte page, but for I, we wanted a 32K page. So this is the LM order um, uh, for, for our uh, mail pages. And actually, there is more, more, more things that you can do. So, so compiling hours and the long log of compiling order, more information can be stuck in here. And I'm talking about, so actually, if you think about it, you can probably merge the solution for them and for zero copy. And then zero copy itself, well, you have to, 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 to be uh, compromised on security, just like you would with the gate, but you don't compromise the system. And it's kind of really important. And you can have your address and the IRV in the same page and as a property of this, of this page. It's not it's all the transient, transient which you update on each IO, it's permanent. And then you don't actually pay the cost of setting this uh, transient property in, in runtime uh, twice, one, one you start and then you finish. It's exactly more than zero copy, it's zero overhead. Uh, so kind of the next steps for, uh, for Mayo specifically, and, and probably then, is uh, I want to you know, send an RFC in a couple of weeks, 
let you go out and think about it and, and say mean things to me. And uh, obviously, we use this library for, for mail. And uh, mail is just beginning. So we can actually dethrone the server. We don't really need the server in a sense. And not least for, for, for branding. So because QEMU, for example, is just another process. So you can do nested mail. Right? So you have the hypervisor that supports mail, the QEMU supports mail, and the guest OS that supports mail. So what you can get is, you know, a, you have multiple queues, and then you have an application that uses mail, the PDK, for example, can use mail, and then you have QMU, and it runs a guest OS, and it has a guest application, and well, the whole stack is network aware, you can do zero copy, so zero overhead, both on receipt and feeds for guest OS. So obviously you'll pay the price in latency, but not in bank. The next thing that you can do is actually, uh, I was once asked, how do you, how can we bridge the, the gap of zero copy scenario and non zero? And, and, and it's not trivial, but maybe we can uh, uh, mitigate some of the loss. So when doing copying in, in user space, you can actually do a vector approaches. And now we have, you know, the x86 with six nano channels and, and with a much wider uh, channel. So maybe we can uh, pay less in, in, in cycles to move per bytes around. Less, in, you know, uh, we can do faster use. So if you have a mail backend and a non mail world application, that can just shares its own memory to end up with the mail backend rather than the kernel, you can do the copy in user space. And then you can uh, hopefully, uh, I still need to go and uh, check if it works. Uh, uh, you can actually do this, have the same application and do some LDP load and, and use many operations as a backend instead of doing the system both directly and maybe get faster uh, or, or cheaper I operations. That's, that's kind of the, sorry, the three main things that I'm uh, looking you know, to do in, 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 the, in the future. All right. So the basic premise here is uh, memory segmentation. I hope I, I was able to convince her of is just assign a role, which is not transient, to a page. Allocate it intentionally, and you know, don't worry about freeing, and, and don't do stupid stuff, the, the things that are on it. Like don't do metadata, and don't store metadata on my way. And then we can get secure IO at more than 100 bits per second, which you couldn't do before. Else, your other option is do what we did previously, right? A, Add and remove the transit, transit properties for each buffer. And then you, you can use IMU as we do today and have no security. So I will repeat it for, 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 for the first project. As we use IMU today, even the strict option, when we flatly IP on each file, the kernel is not secure. Right? So we have no security. It's like the naked thing. We feel like we have security, but we don't. And we zero copy, uh, again, it's, it's the first true zero copy project, which allows you to use all the uh, network infrastructure that we you know, built in the past 30 years and have this in the same application, right? So you don't have to build the infrastructure on all on your own. Uh, so if you wish, you can try the, the existing code on this uh, uh, GitHub. So my, my uh, user on GitHub is just my, my, my family name, Marcuse. If you have questions, just email me. Uh, I will be really uh, excited if there will be uh, more, more people get involved. And of course, you know, that is your support. And uh, yep. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, 40 minutes, five minutes for questions. I have more backup slides if, you, if we have questions about uh, performance and uh, specific implementation of function. Or have an example of really stupid things they can do with fire. David? Thank you very much. Uh, there had been a question in chat about um, upstreaming, but I think you've covered that with the link you gave at the end. Um, does it's, anybody it's else my, have? It's, it's, it's my working brain, so, so the actual RFC uh, patches are, are common in, 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 in the next couple of uh, weeks, maybe a month. Beautiful, thank you. Can you see the chat now? 
No, sorry, I have. No. I, I okay. really can't. The metrics just you know, spins and spins. Fair enough. Um, so anybody who is talking in the chat, if you have a, a question, please turn your camera on and, and ask, or ask me specifically, and I can relay it. Okay, so uh, let me just uh, for, for uh, so, so some you know uh, to talk about performance. So this is some of the slides that show that basically we, we run some experiments on GCP uh, because we don't didn't have a physical setup when I started working on this. So basically we, we took two uh, K buffers each six K and we sent them in a loop over this K uh, over one 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 core. And what we got is that with an unoptimized solution, because the way the, I'm, I'm sending today is I'm using send page for each a page rather than the whole chunk once. And so it's unoptimized and it's not the best way to do it. Because messages are copy just, you know, that's the, the one function call and, and I'm doing 16 times for 16 buffers. And still with this, you know, really basic uh, implementation, you get 8% faster than messages are copy, right? And you can see that uh, looking at that perf, it may have just, you know, just do, do the CP send pages, do the post, uh, the system function, go through the speed send pages, and then just write and send back. There are no overhead actually. So it's overhead free. And while the message zero copy has a lot of uh, page table manipulation stuff, and, and, and again, so I look at the system calls doing the same, it's really, really a problem. It's the scale. Right. Um, the implementation details, uh, I will not uh, talk about it now because we're almost out of time. But if anyone is interested, you can you know, uh, look at the slides and, and, and read it on yourself, by yourself. And um, there is a DPDK version of mail already because it's kind of my employer needed. Uh, why? Because it's hardware agnostic. We have just one PMD form of driver for any hardware which you can you know, tweak and modify to uh, zero copy. And you still use standard Linux tools and you can use hybrid use cases, right? You can use the PDK to decrypt the information, right? Or encrypt it. And then send the plain text via the network stuff. And everything is 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 left with zero copy. So kernel, user, back to kernel. And, and you don't pay any overheads and you're doing decryption and decryption with vector operations in user space, which are obvious. And so, so simple, we just have a receiver in addition to the stream and do directly stream package with the same way this packaging does. And they already have a huge page management. And, 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 and. Uh, I see you, Goop. Oh, I just to say, I have a look, a look at the, uh, the perfect pro, uh, status you have made mentioned the last slide in the last slide and i see i see a lot of uh, folks on the uh, spin local low pace that uh, seems it's a very high contention in that scenario is that right for, for, for which one uh you in in your last slide you you, I you was show us that, that was message your copy yes they had contention yeah. on, on they yeah had yeah it's it, yeah, it's a contention. Uh, and uh, can, can you give, give give us the slide that you have show us that uh, uh, that the um, perf uh, perf report uh, report? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So so let's skip the slides. Uh, yeah, that's yeah 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 yeah. And. Yeah, and and uh, and the seems it's it, it, the the most cost is on the clean spin local slow pace, and that means that means it's got a lot of uh, got, got a lot of contention. What's happening? Uh, do you think about it? It's especially zero copy. It's kind of a, I wanted to look at that with the scale issues. I think it's probably the same here. It's it's a virtual machine, and so maybe you have to have some issues with you know virtualization as well. Really, I don't know, and it's kind of that's not my project. 
that was not my focus. I don't really have good, uh, good answers to why the basis messenger copy uh, has performance issues. My, my, uh, so my focus was, was here on mail. Okay, so you you recorded that in the virtual machine, and uh, and uh, so 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 the re recorder just represent uh, the the counting is at that point, but uh, maybe they have released the CPU to the whole system. Yeah, that's right. It's, um... So but, but, but the, the the figure that I've shown, I kind of I kind of didn't didn't. Uh, Slow down here. So, what? Because we we're looking at Hyper and Mayo and some Mayo implementation, we just just open a socket and start pushing bytes. Uh, what we did, we, we we just captured the uh, idle cycles, uh, trying to mm -hmm. capture busy cycles is a mistake uh, because undercounts when the system is busy. Uh, and and what we looked for is uh, how many CPU cycles you're spending per cent byte, because while Mayo message zero copy. In some file, we're reaching 32 gigabits per second. Hyper from Able stack at about 20. So the way to compare them in a single graph is to show the number of cycles on average you spend for 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 some time. So that's why that's what we see here. So Hyper has got the the same test and Mayo uh, and, and Mrs. Zirkovi have done on average to less than 2.5 uh, CPU cycles. So, uh, for uh, for each and five. So the cost is there. Again, it's not a deep analysis. It's a, a simple experiment. And again, it's, it's a work in progress. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Yeah. And um, uh, well, I'm done again. There's one amusing thing I would like to show, but it's non mandatory. Uh, if there are no more questions. Let me show the example very quick. So one really interesting thing you can do with the drive. So this is an NVMe fiber channel you need to test, right? So we have this Vodcom interface, for example. It's a generic drive. Uh, and what we do here, what they do in the drive, is they create an event to the device, allowing the device a uh, read access to this uh, command uh, IU, it sizes 90 bytes. And a couple lines later, they uh, map the response IU, it sizes 32 bytes and provide write access. So, write access doesn't provide you read access. You can actually write, but you can really read what you did. But when you look at the command IU and response IU, you actually find that they sit, probably sit on, on, on the same page because it's the part of the same data structure. So when they map one for read and the other for write, you know, they kind of hope that you know they, they just map just 96 bytes and then the first two bytes. But what happened is they mapped this whole data structure and the one before it, by the way. And one of the things that they mapped is FCP request data structure. And if you look at FCP request, you find the the callback function, and which is basically which of, which are this which can then modify. Right. And so you, when you're talking about NXB and, and, and case lab, nothing is actually going to say it can be working on. And when you have this, uh, both read and write access, uh, you can blank it. So if you take an FPGA and, and instead of saying that I'm an E1000 device, you can say I'm an NVMe device, let's stop talking, uh, you're in transmission again. So that's that's why copying is also a solution uh, besides that. So it's kind of all the free uh, projects kind of should be combined. David, I'm I'm done with the material if, if you know no more questions. Thank you all for 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 attending. Cool, thank you ever so much, Alex. Um it's brilliant to hear from you. It's really interesting. Um and well thank you again.